Good evening YouTube. We're going to do a review here of the Amcrest uh, 4K 8 megapixel POD camera. Um, it can run off of PoE. It can run off of 12 volt um, DC uh, and it is indoor outdoor rated. Um, I believe it's IP67 um, IP67 waterproof, yeah. So it can go inside, outside, uh, wherever you like it. Uh, the housing on this camera is metal. Um, it will take a micro SD card. Um, it will record to your local PC or use their Amcrest Cloud uh, service, which is new for them. Um, I've been trying to record this video for two days now. I've had multiple issues with recording devices so we're back to using this old GoPro um, and trying to get something up here online tonight um, reviewing this camera so this camera was sent out to the channel to do a review on from Amcrest um, actually picked it up through Amazon which uh, partnered with them on this this camera so inside the box you have the camera and you have a template. I've installed the camera. I'm going to show how it's installed here in the garage. So there's some waterproof um, connectors. So if you need to run the cable through a bulkhead, a wall, or whatnot, um, you can use that. It comes with a template, which you can just peel it off and stick it um, to the ceiling, to the wall. It makes those holes a lot easier. Um, some quick start guides and one month free of cloud service if you want to use the, the Amcrest cloud. Um, and that's all that came in here. I did buy a uh, 128 gig card um, which is a 100 meg per second card to make sure that the camera records in full speed. Um, one thing to note here when you're using um, Ethernet and PoE, it only uses um, a 100 meg connection. So you, there's no need to upgrading uh, your PoE switch if you have a PoE switch to a gigabit switch because um, the controller on this is only 10 by 100, um, 10 meg or 100 meg. Um, connection. So I'm going to spin around here real quick and you can see the camera up there. You just heard my phone go off because I do have motion sensing on. This is not a permanent install. This install here was just temporary um, just to get the camera up and start seeing what it looks like. Uh, I also want to see how wide of an angle that this camera would show. Um, from right here, I can see the wall, and I can see this whole wall over there. So this is a perfect spot for it. I'm thinking about moving this camera over to the center of the garage um, so I can see outside a little bit more. Because right now when the garage door is open, you, uh, it, it gets kind of washed out. And we'll, we'll look through the app here in just a second, I'll show you that. Um, my biggest issue with this install was if you use the cable to run out through the back like I have it does not it's more like a pain in the butt to put it in because you have to run the cable through the base plate and if you um, if you slip the camera wants to fall and the cable wants to run back out through the the um, the metal plate if you were running the cable through the ceiling or through a wall, it'd be different because then the cable would be on the other side and the four holes that you need to use to mount the, the bracket on, the base plate, um, you could just mount the base plate and then push your wires through the sheetrock at a later time. Um, that's what I'm going to do when I reinstall it. If you can see, there are some holes behind there because the mounting screws um, are, are small um, stainless steel screws, I guess they are, because they're not going to rust. They're stainless steel screws, and it comes with four, uh, four screws and four 
sheetrock anchors. The sheetrock anchors are really cheap and as I was putting them in and screwing them, they were just spinning in the sheetrock. Could it be a combination of old sheetrock, cheap anchors? I don't know. Uh, right now I have thick uh, sheetrock screws holding the camera up for right now, um, just in its temporary location. On the front of the camera, to the left hand side, uh, the white circle is an infrared circle, um, infrared blaster, excuse me. On the right hand side, the big black one is your optical sensor, so that's your camera. There's a little dot in the top middle, and that is your mic. And on the bottom, that is another um, uh, motion sensor uh, for it. To pan and tilt this camera, you have to manually do it. So you have to grab the camera, twist it, tilt it, whatever way you want. And um, for left and right, you can use the screw that's on top. Right underneath the Amcrest logo, there's a little um, safety screw there that you can um, tighten or loosen just to move the camera around. Wind will not affect this. Um, so if you're thinking of a windy day, I mean, there's just two little pieces of plastic holding, uh, excuse me, three pieces of plastic, kind of like rubber plastic feet that go between the base plate and the camera itself. So go back over here to my phone and we're going to open up the Amcrest Pro app. So this app here. And you can see us in the garage here right now. Um, this is a pretty nice app. I really like it. We'll go from the top here. Okay, so looking through the app here. <clears throat> you can see your, um, your live view of how many cameras you want. Four, nine, or up to 16. Or you can just double tap whatever one you want. And it will just stay in full screen. You can talk through the camera. You can listen to audio on the other side. There's like a one second delay there. You can change your resolution from HD to SD. You can take a snapshot. You can record and these two items are what you're going to see over here as um, my saved files. Sorry my Ryobi camera uh, or garage door is showing me motion in here. When you go in and out of the app and go back to live view, it goes back to the last camera you previously selected. Um, you can force this into nighttime view. Oh, night vision off. Because it is still bright in here. Um, and then under the camera, your motion detection settings are right here on the far right hand side. So your region setting is where you want the motion sensor to um, activate. So you can create a region so we can clear this whole region if you want to erase everything. If you just want that region, it's as easy as that. You just want that region. So you can do, you can do multiple little regions to initiate your your motion sensor. So I particularly like, let's get it right. Come on. I've got a window here. So I want to put that region there. And I want to do this region here because that's where my door is. And maybe that region right there. So that's all I need. I can see in and out my door right here to the house and there's a window right there. So that's my, I'm going to save that. Playback is if you want to look at anything that's happened during the day, whatever's been saved on the camera, my camera records everything. It's in the full loop. Um, if you wanted to change your record settings, we can go into, come on, it is in your, I believe it's configuration setting. 
uh, recording schedule. So you can see that there's three different colors here. We click edit up here, normal, motion, or alarm. So normal is green, motion is yellow, and red is alarm. I have not played with the three of these. I know that the normal means it will record nonstop for the hours that you pick. Motion will mean it will start recording and save just those motion um, activities for that time frame. And you can, here's all your, other, all your alarm triggers. That's where it was. Now when it's retrieving configuration, it is going from here to my Wi-Fi access point all the way down to the basement, which is hardwired. Nope. I haven't played with alarm triggers, so I don't know what's behind that menu. <clears throat> what else do we have here? Audio detect, if you want just to detect some audio and then start recording. Um, since it's outside in the garage, I don't think that would be smart because cars going up and down my road will hear uh, we'll probably kick this thing on all the time push notifications pretty self-explanatory I only have the alarm set for low disk space um, the the memory card is saved or is inside the camera which you have to take the camera fully apart um, to actually get into it and put the the, the memory card in there it's not really hard. Um, it is three screws on the outside of the base. And then there is, when you take off the cover, there's another um, two screws inside of it. And you put your memory card in. What else can we go here? Now I've been just using this camera for the last four, four days now. Um, Setup was real easy. Um, as soon as you download the app, it's going to ask you for a QR code. The QR code is actually, see the little tag right there? It's on that tag. So you'll, um, you'll plug in the camera and you'll open up your app. You'll scan the QR code and it does everything for you. It's very, very simple. Um, I want to show you this. So this can hold from 4 to 16 cameras. These cameras can be PoE cameras. They can be Wi-Fi cameras. Any um, Amcrest camera. Maybe other ones are, can be used as well, but uh, Amcrest cameras can be added to here. I am in the process of getting two more cameras, one more PoE camera and one Wi-Fi camera. So I will most likely be using this view right here of four. So I have my garage, I'll have my basement back door, and I'll have my basement office. Um, basement office will be a Wi-Fi camera and another PoE camera in the basement. Um, looking at my back sliding glass door, which there's not a lot of coverage back there. Um, just to have just to have some extra security but as far as the um, the app goes it's it's pretty self-explanatory it's very easy to use I haven't found anything in here that I needed extra um, the only thing I would like to see is on push notifications that we could have the The, uh, the notifications go to uh, to a tag right here. You can't, there's no flags. Maybe I can find it inside of um, Apple settings, but there's no flags that you can throw on the actual, the, the app, which I would like to see, but it's not, it's not really the end of the world. Um, I can always just pull down and see, um, see my my activity there what else oh under push notifications there's it also your event list your event list is going to show you all the different motions that had happened 
during that that time of uh, <clears throat> the time you selected. So if you want face detection, we don't have that turned on. We just have motion on ours. So I can click on any of these and it will come back up. Again, there's a little latency and that latency is just because the phone is talking Wi-Fi to the Wi-Fi access point, which is hardwired to the basement and then coming from the camera. Um, so this is reading it off the camera, not like reading it from a cloud-based service. So it says all this motion, but it keeps popping up. There's nothing there. No recording. Okay. I did want to show you uh, playback. So we will go back to the camera here. And you can look at um, pictures you've taken. So you can pick your time frame. Pick your device. And on the bottom here you'll see. <coughs> excuse me. The bottom here you'll start seeing some green. And this green shows you all the. Everything that's green is your um, stuff you've recorded. So that was that was last night you see up here. Um, I can fast forward. See the van moved a little bit. We were out today. Oh, that's my car in here. And it's it's really it's relatively quick. And you can see what I mean by it's washed out back there. That's probably me coming and going for the day. Kids get in the car. It is a nice wide angle on this lens here. <laughs> yep, car disappeared. So you double click it, it will come on. Here we go. And you can see it's super wide angle. You can see the whole wall coming down and you can see this whole wall here. So that whole wall and on this side you can see the whole wall besides the fridge being in the way right here. So it's got a great field of view here. Great. Um, I like the wide angle and initially I was like well I wish it wasn't so fisheye. I wish it was more of a <laughs> more of a standard camera view, like a four by three view. Um, but the wide angle really does do it justice. You can see the window, which is right over here. Um, I, and I believe outside on the side of your house, this would be a great camera. Um, we may try this here in a couple weeks to put it on the outside of the house and see what it looks like outside. But here in the garage, this is perfect. Gives me extra, um, extra eyes on on when we have the garage door open, if somebody walks into the garage, um, besides my Ryobi system right there that keeps showing some, some movement. Um, you know, long story short, the Amcrest uh, camera is really nice. I really like it. I'm glad that I was able to try this out. Um, very happy with the, the, the brand and the, the company's effort to provide a low cost, um, pretty much durable camera. Um, I love having a metal housing. Uh, it's not plastic. There's no plastic on it, which is great. So you're not worrying about um, it cracking or uh, heat getting to it outside. Um, they do come in two colors, white and black. And uh, I'm really, really looking forward to continuing to use their products because there's not much stuff out there on the market that is, you know, at this price of a hundred and I think I paid hundred and nine dollars for the camera. Um, there's not much stuff out there in the market that you can get at that price range. Um, I've seen plenty of PoE cameras um, for you know, Chinese knockoff cameras that are, you know, 20, 30 bucks and they don't work very well. Um, and I've seen some that were up in the $200 range, uh, starting even more, um, that you need specific DVRs and stuff for them. Um, 
yeah so this is the Amcrest camera guys um, really like it uh, happy to use it and please uh, like comment subscribe let me know if there's any